Hello. Um, just in time for St. Patrick's Day a couple weeks ago, we're going to do corned beef and cabbage. Uh, somebody on Facebook said that they had tried making a corned beef once based on the package instructions and it came out tasting like Vienna sausages. Which, what are you doing? I'm just trying to get you in the best light possible. I don't know. Now you need to get closer. You're you're beautiful back there. That not that close. That's too close. That's perfect. All right. Better. It's fine. Just go. So, someone on Facebook said they made a corned beef cabbage and it turned out tasting like a Vienna sausage. Yeah, I don't know exactly. Which is horrifying. Which is horrifying. So I'm gonna give. This would fall under my uh, too damn easy status of recipes. This we've done this year after year after year after year, and it makes for good corned beefs. B5, I don't know, whatever. Um, half a pound of baby carrots, or however many carrots you like. If you like a lot of carrots, put in a lot of carrots. Um, give, obviously, give the dogs a couple carrots. Here. Show everybody how good. That's it. You got it, Brutus? I got Super it. Super do it. Man. And I'm going to go cook now without washing my hands after touching dog mouth. Okay, so carrots, um, three or four medium potatoes. I don't really care what kind of potatoes you use. We found these, a little bit of green. I don't know, these might be like kiwis, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, that's it, that's the base of it. Uh, corned beef. Basically, if you go to the store, the two things you'll usually find are like point cut or flat cut. Point cut, super flat, flatty? Super fatty, and we're not huge fans of it. So we went with a flat cut which obviously is a flat cut. It's just got a little slab of fat on it. So what we're going to do is put it fat side up because that way the fat will, I don't know, do something magical from what I understand. <coughs> but you do that and here's the magic ingredient is booze. And there's, we've done it with Guinness, we've done it with straight up beer. This time we're going to do it a little different and use Fox Barrel Pear Cider. I've cooked with this before, and it's good. And we're going to put almost an entire 16, 17-ounce can in here. Why almost? Just put it all in there. Well, I was going to have a sip. Oh, okay. So, yeah. It's really good. And this will give you all the liquid you need, so you won't have to add water. Because this is going to cook all day. So that goes in there, and then finally... You have what calls corned beef. This is where the corns come from. Pepper corns. I, I just made that up. That could be total bullshit. I have no idea. Um, but you take that little packet, and I just throw it over the top. I don't know if you want to come and see an exciting shot of it. Look at that. I'm excited. Oh, boy. Look at that. Julia Child has nothing on this. Plus, she's dead, so I'm... I'm in the, what? She's not going to... What? Do you really think somebody from the Julia Child estate is following this YouTube video? Mm. I'm going to go with... <laughs> no. <laughs> and I'm coughing. Try not to cough on the food. <laughs> All right. That is literally it. Um, cabbage will go in towards the end, because if you put the cabbage in now, you're just going to get sludge. So, I honestly don't remember. Normally, we just eyeball it. So, we'll come back on that in a few hours. We're just going to leave it on low. And towards the end of it... We're going to pack this thing with cabbage and just leave it go until the cabbage starts to get uh, tender. So we'll check back on you sure, uh, not shortly, in a few hours. All right, it's been about five hours, give or take. And whoa, there's a big puff of steam. The potatoes are done. I've already uh, tested it. Um, I flipped the... Flipped, corned beef. Flipped the corned beef over just to make sure it was done, and it's... Just by poking at it, it's pretty much done, which means we go into the final stage, and that's loading in the cabbage. Um, generally, we like to use somewhere between a shitload and a metric fuck ton of cabbage. I just cut it into largish pieces and just fit it in the best I can. Which, as you probably all know who follow this, 
is going to end poorly. Oh, wow. okay. I'm sure if you caught that. Um, all right. So there we go. There's a large amount of cabbage in there. And I will put the lid back on. It's fine. Stop manhandling the cabbage. The lid almost fits. This is actually less cabbage that we usually use. So we'll probably give this, I don't know, this could be anywhere from 30 minutes up to another hour until the cabbage gets soft. Soft. It Should it still have a little tiny bit of uh No, it shouldn't. No, the no. cabbage should be just completely mushy on yes. the verge of sauerkraut. That is correct. Okay, so we'll just check back in and uh, then we'll let you know how it is. If it is Vienna sausage-ish or not. All right. It's been a total of about seven hours. Um, and here we have it. This is it. This is done. Mm. There is a corned beef. Uh, these are the veggies. This is what you should be looking at. Real hot, sludgy cabbage. The house is redolent with the aroma of cabbage. You may have to look that one up. That's fine. Um, we were going to do corned beef and cabbage, but we decided we were going to change things up and we're going to make Rubens instead, because the Rubens my all-time favorite sandwich. We are going to eat the cabbage and the other veggies, but we're going to have it as a side. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this heaping slab of fat, because this is not anything we want on our sandwich. So that's gone. And here, once we cut it, and that's it. That's what a good corned beef should look like. I, I don't know if you can smell that, but take a whiff. I, I can smell it. People at home, it's very good. It smells wonderful. So what we're going to do is cut some nice slices of corned beef. This wasn't a particularly big corned beef. I regret not buying a bigger one because this is nice. So stop on the way home on Monday and buy another one. Done. So we're going to take some corned beef. We're going to lay it out all pretty like. Brutus. <laughs> stop. For the record, this corned beef is hot, hot because it came out. out of the crock pot. It did come out of the crock pot. That's the magical land where corned beef comes from. So there you have that. Now, if you're going to do a good Reuben Thousand Island, this is uh, some of Aldi's finest dressing. If Aldi would like to offer us a sponsorship, we'll take it. <clears throat> Slather some Thousand Island. That's like my favorite dressing as a kid. That's a little bit of history. Um, yeah. Aldi brand sauerkraut, which Aldi's out of Germany, and the Germans understand sauerkraut. They understand it. They understand it. They, they have, understand. They it have like, an understanding. They understand it like the Swedish understand lye and beige food. You know, enough. Okay, so there's heaping amounts. That looks wonderful. I'm just going to eat the rest of the sauerkraut, so you just leave Here, I don't know if there's there. any of you... This is probably disgusts people. Watch this. <laughs> well, when you make that noise, yeah. And then we're going to go with cheese over the top of the Swiss variety. Notice beige. So that's not Swedish. No, would you cut it out? You don't know what you're talking about. Completely I clueless. can't keep track of my... Sweden, Switzerland. It's well, they start with the same two letters, <laughs> so must be the same place. They do. It is. No, it's not. All right. So. What are you doing? What are you doing? There's a little bit of good meat on there. Well, why don't we focus on what we're doing here? All right. This is going to go in under the broiler just for a few minutes, just until everything is hot and or bubbly, like a baby's diaper. So, all right, give us like three minutes and we'll be back. We'll have everything plated. It'll be very dramatic. We're back. Look at that. There it is. Hot, toasty, 
the bread. Ah, yes. Toasty on one side, soft on the other, which is what happens when you take it straight out of the freezer. So, what I will do is plate one of these up. That's what we call it in the industry. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way to plate it, and I'm going to... Really? What are you doing? This is going to work. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah! Look at that. All right. So, we've got a sandwich. 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 Yeah, there it is. Sandwich. Brutus, get out of the way. We've got cabbage. Now, I've already tasted this, so I assure you it does not, in fact, taste like a Vienna sausage. If it did taste like a Vienna sausage, that's, at this point, there's nothing more I can do for you. Um, got a few potatoes in there. Let's get one more potato. And a little more carrot. There it is. So what we've got here is what we like to call in the industry... An ass blaster. I was going to go with gastric bludgeon. Yeah, all right. So, there it is. Do you want me to take a picture of it? Or do you want me to, sorry, do you want me to take a bite of it in front of everyone to prove that it's not disgusting? I, why don't you ask them? You want me to take a bite of it? Okay. So, <laughs> here we go. It's a little, here, I'm going to go from this end. You want to get every subtle nuance of the crunching, right? Yeah, I'm ready. You're disgusting me. Just eat the sandwich. Oh, my God. It's all over your face. So, I'm going to go. Oh, God, I thought you were giving me the cap to wipe my mouth with. <laughs> so, the sandwich is absolutely delicious. The cabbage... Yep. I'm just go through all of it. <laughs> Carrots, chew, right. chew. And the potato. It's hot. Fucking hot. But delicious. So there you have it. I have taken you from the land of Vienna sausages. You are so gross. You ready? I know you're going to love this. Watch this with our dish towel. Mm. <laughs> From the land of Vienna sausages, straight into the promised land of the Reuben sandwich. So, um, <laughs> there's nothing more I have to offer you today, so, good times.